These are Yoru players' biggest mistakes that cost wins. Today, you'll learn what not to do and how to fix it. You might think you mastered number seven, but haven't. How to do fake out properly, right? So this is the mistake. Most of you guys, when you're doing fake outs, you just throw like one clone, instantly TP to A, and you're like, oh my God, I faked them out. I can hit A site for free now. And then you instantly die. You're not giving the enemy enough time to rotate and even fall for it. To properly do a fake out, you need to be a bit more elaborate with it, right? So maybe come here, drop the spike a few times. That way they hear the spike. And then on their comms, they're like, wait, spikes B, spikes B. And then they leave A site, come to B site. You could even ask your teammate to throw a smoke for you or throw like a fake like Sova dart out, right? You can get really elaborate with this to sell a fake. And then from there, then you can TP, catch up with your lurkers and take the site for free. You got to remember... Your enemies have brains too. Let me do a, an A fake first. I'll TP to you guys, B. Nice. Chamber and Gecko on A. Wait, the fake spike drop got the rotations out. Holy. Remember, chat, whenever you're planning on site here and it's like safe, always plant in the open for lane and stairs. I'm flashing. Okay. IGLing. This is how most of you guys IGL in your games. Ready? Not saying a word and not communicating with your team at all. Then you just TP onto site with no game plan and you wonder why you lose. A way to keep IGLing simple is coming up with a game plan with your teammates before the round starts. Typically you're initiators, but it can work with any of your teammates. So instead I would be like, hey Sky, can you throw a flash onto site with me and then I'll TP off of it. And then Sky can throw her flash and then I'll TP off of the blinds and set up for a nice free kill. So let's do another hard beat hit. I'm gonna TP yeah. logs this time. Through. I'm gonna I'm gonna clone the chips. I'm gonna clone. I'm gonna flash out two jet. Ready? Flashing now. Yeah. I'm cool, Black. The next mistake we're going to fix is how to lurk properly. Most of the time, when you guys are lurking, you're just splitting a site like normal, like right? Like your team would be hitting C long here, and you're just thinking you're lurking into garage, being all quiet, and you're instantly dying. That's not lurking. That's just splitting a site slow. Here's how to fix your lurks. So let's say your team is hitting C site like before. Instead of going garage slow, what you can do is lurk up onto B site, and you know the players from A are going to be rotating to C because your team's hitting C, and then, then you can kill the rotators from A, when they least expect it. And then from there, you can TP away the safety and maybe catch up with your team or take up all of this B space and go for a nice pinch back site. I'll handle this. Uh, back up, it's mid. Graze is lurking, yeah. Graze is lurking A, but just her. Everybody else is like in spawn. Yeah. I'm back. Good flash. Yeah. Portal close. B, B, B. Spike. I got Spike. One enemy remaining. Spike down, Chamber attack spawn. Nice. nice. The next big mistake I see players making is not using Yoro's utility to counter other enemies' utility. In my Yoro Masterclass, I have a full breakdown on how to counter every single agent with Yoro, but I'm gonna list a few of my favorite here. I was talking to one of my students about this because he was avoiding B-side on Sunset completely because of this Cypher trip here, and... I feel like a lot of people have the same issue. So yeah, everybody knows that Yoro clone can counter the trip, right? But I think where people struggle is, first of all, not shooting the trip after your clone tanks it to make it easier for the rest of your team. Make sure you're calming with your team and having them push off of the window that your clone is giving you to get through the trip, right? So tell your team, okay, when my clone hits the trip, then we push out, right? And then your entire team can push past the trip while your clone is tanking it. I'm gonna flash TP out, flashing out. We, have, we gotta go with Spike, we gotta go with Spike. Backside, backside, one. Flashing, flashing. Go back side, go back side. Let's go over how to counter ISO because he is really, really strong right now with the buffs. Before the round starts, hold down tab and you can see if the enemy's ISO ult is ready. The second he pops his ult, you throw your clone out and then rush down his body while he's fighting your clone in his ultimate and set yourself up for a free kill. Everyone in my master class has been hitting their goal ranks, and we've even had somebody hit Radiant recently, and that could be you next. It's you and me. Wait, he ulted my clone! He ulted my clone! You will not be killed by allies. 
To counter raise ult, you would do something really similar. So a lot of raises like to do this double satchel down a short right when the walls drop. So again, hold down tab. You can see the enemy raise has ult and you think to yourself, okay, raise might ult down short here. So how can I counter it? Pull out your clone. And the second you hear raise do her fire in the whole audio, send out the clone towards her direction and she will more than likely shoot it because most raises instantly shoot the first thing they see when their ult is out. You can also counter this even if you don't have your clone, right? So like if raises shoot the first thing they come in contact with, you can jump towards her and cast her TP and she will instantly go to shoot you and you can TP away, dodging it completely. All right, don't freeze and panic when you hear a raise ult. If you have a TP set up, do your best to bait it out and then TP away for your team. Say that though. Not even looking at it. <laughs> Oh, that was almost ugly. Like I mentioned, I have a full breakdown on how to counter every single agent, as well as how to become a pro Yoru in my Yoru Masterclass. Most coaching is around $100 for a one hour session, and mine is lifetime access. It's also 50% off, but only for the next 50 students, so don't miss out. Take advantage of the deal while you can. Click the link in the description and join us inside. I joined the Yoru Masterclass because I didn't know how to use Yoru's abilities, and I always died when I TP'd or got out of my ult, and I didn't know how to flash correctly. The Yoru Masterclass helped me a lot because I knew how to do a better idea of flashing and learning one-way flashes and i didn't die to my tp anymore and i went from gold three to ascendant one the next mistake we're going to go over is how to hold sites properly most of you guys like to play corners like this with no tp set up super easily tradable and you die all the time instead of fix for that what i would like you to start doing is play more off angles right so this is another this is a great off angle back site here that i like a lot I have map guides in the master class that show a lot of off angles, but this one is a one of my favorites for B side on split. So make sure you're playing an off angle. Have a TP set up. That way you can get your kill and get out without being traded. That is what Yoru excels at. Really take advantage of getting your ones and then leaving before anybody can kill you. I'll play here like this. The enemy will start to push out. And then I'll kill them. TP away. Completely untradeable. Now we have man advantage for retake. The next mistake we're going to cover is how to play post plant properly. Most of you guys don't play time and you always greed for the kills. You don't use any utility and you die. Here's the fix for it. Most of the time, if you throw a flash, the enemy will hop off of the spike because they think you're trying to kill them. So in the post plant, you can, first of all, play time, use a flash to stall, right? You can even use a fake TP to stall. That usually gets them off pretty big because people are scared about Yoru TPs. Or you can pop ult. And then the second you unult, they will get off the tap because they think that you're trying to kill them. So use your utility, play time correctly, and you will win a lot more post plants. There should really be no reason you lose post plant when you have Yoru ult. Use it to stall as long as possible and get info on the spike taps. Uh, he's off, he's off, he's off, he's off, he's off. Still not on, still on. He's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing. I'm back. One enemy remaining. Just start, just start, just start. Nice. Trust I am. I don't know how you stay alive, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Good yeah. job. Another big mistake I see is people not entering properly, right? Most of you guys kind of have the flash TP down, which is great, but you don't need to flash TP every single round, especially if the enemy is getting used to it. Here's how to fix it. Instead of just blindly flash TPing in every single round and trying to get insane 1v5 clips, try to play for a little bit of info first and then work with your initiator to set yourself up for even easier kills than flash TPs. So let's say there's an enemy playing dice here. I can set up my TP like back left. And like we get like, let's say we have info from like Sobodron or whatever it is. Like, oh, there's an enemy dice. Breach, can you stun dice for me? And then combine that with the flash plus the breach stun, TP, kill the enemy playing dice. You don't even have to use a flash necessarily. Like I said, you can dry TP off of your allies utility as well. If it's like really fast in a pinch and you don't have time to throw a flash, you don't always need to throw a flash when you're TPing, especially if your teammates are using utility with you. Take bomb. But oh, you can't destroy that. Yeah, they've already rotated, they've already rotated. Do you have a, do you have a death for snowman? I can make a play. Yeah, yeah, you definitely snowman. Yeah, 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 do, 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 I got a bonus tip for you guys, and it's how to clutch properly. Most of you guys would see the spike down, right? Your team tried to hit A site. 
all of your teammates died, the spike is down, and in your head, you're like, okay, I have to hit a site here. So let me try to get the spike, you know, maybe try to like throw a flash TP, TP on a site, and try to just 1v3 magically clutch. That doesn't work. Instead, to fix your clutches, first of all, you want to be taking as many 1v1s as possible. So play like super tight angles, only take one fight at a time. That's going to help tremendously. But you also want to make sure that you're setting yourself up for really unpredictable plays, right? So let's say the spike is down, the enemy is watching it, you're in a clutch situation, you have ultimate. How can you be unpredictable? You can set up a TP towards wine, maybe. Then you can ult, grab the spike, right? You see the enemy all on A site. They think that you're going to take the spike B. Ult, take the spike to B site, right? Start doing a plant. And then on their comms, they hear, oh, he's planting B, he's planting B. And instead, you TP back to A, and now you're actually planting A. This is the level of unpredictability you need to be using in your games. And then from there, you can even get aggressive, right? Let's say they start rotating back to A site. Now you know they're coming back A, right? Maybe you can like peek and try to take a quick 1v1 and then back up again. Now it's a 1v2 or maybe a 1v1. And doing unpredictable plays like this will make your clutches so much more successful. I cannot stress it enough. Last player standing. Oh. Enemy oh. remaining. My I'll handle this. Cutting through. I'm back. Fake teleport. Nice. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And if you want to master Yoru, join the masterclass. Link in the description.